If you want to know BS answer to what's the best and worst classes in the Elder Scrolls Online and PvP, great. You came to the right video. I've played all six classes, both Magic and Stamina, and you'll want to watch this video for pros and cons of each with real practical experience and knowledge. We're talking big, huge necro nukes. Biden! Nightblade bombs. Super tanky Templars. Speedy Wardens. And BB. Oh! 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 Bumblebee Sorcerers. Meteor, streak them. Bumblebee. Bang, baby! That's the Bumblebee, baby! And the indomitable force that is the Dragonite. Hit him, hit him, hit him! Yeah! I'll be judging these classes off resource sustained, survivability, raw damage, solo and group play, and ease of play. Let's start off the list with my least favorite and by far the Magic Nightblade, what I firmly believe is the weakest class in ESO PvP. The Magic Nightblade is up first, and I would rank it C-, the weakest class in ESO PvP. The class has two predominant roles it fits, a single target range DPS or an up-close and personal bomber. The problem is, other classes fulfill these roles much better, and you end up working way harder than any other class to make it work well. The Magblade single target playstyle revolves around obtaining five stacks of Merciless Resolve and combining this with the proc of Calorion's Legacy gear set. So you think you're sneaky, you're the next cypher pk your five stacks is up you're ready to fire off your assassin's will bang you unload and guess what happens your enemy dodge rolls and you've wasted your entire combo going to nothing now you have to peel back hang in the shadows building up your stacks and hoping a magic dragonite doesn't find you extremely predictable damage and extremely boring then we have the bomber play style which sure can nuke huge groups but have you seen a lot of mag blade meta bombers out there nope they've all switched to mag crow because mag crow is the class that can do huge nukes without getting killed easily moreover in battlegrounds my magic necro bomber can go 20 kills and no deaths consistently in high matchmaking battlegrounds when was the last time you saw a bomber do well in a battleground never this is the one class i have zero desire to play because i asked myself what specifically does the mag blade bring to the table that i can't get from another class a fat nothing burger making a hard pass for me and a class that sits on the bench most of the time next up we have an unfortunately another weak class and something i can't stand playing and that's the magic warden Great, you think the Magnum looks purdy with all them green animations and quote unquote frost damage. Buckle up, you're in for disappointment. I rate this class C tier. The major strengths of the Warden come from their passives in the Animal Companion skill line. Bond with nature, healing for using your main nuke deep fissure. Savage Beast, generating ultimate for using your main nuke deep fissure. In advanced species, increasing your damage for slotting Animal Companion abilities. You end up with a skill line dependent damage dealer, which slaps on bird of prey from their 5% damage increase and major expedition within the class and you have a speedy magic build. The downside, Arctic Blast is your main form of healing which requires a massive HP pool because it scales in effectiveness based off your max HP. You sacrifice too much to survive and don't have the in-class ultimates to lean on like a Dragonite. And if you're not going to use the high HP Arctic Blast, great. Now you have to slot 3-4 to four healing abilities to keep up per second healing high enough in pressure fights. The Magnon also has a weird identity problem. It lacks an impactful in-class main spammable. So you're forced to use Vampire skill line and the skill Arterial Burst, which actually scales in effectiveness the lower your HP is. So you really need high HP for Arctic Blast healing and Vampire to have a halfway decent main spammable, and that's basically the only way you can play this class. The benefit of the Magnon over the Magblade is sustained massive AoE damage with Deep Fissure. To be honest, I can't stand playing either Magblade or Magnon often put them on the bench unless someone drops a sub bomb on me. Straight cash, homie. Straight cash, homie. Next up, I'm going to pick a class I currently love but can't figure out, and I think it's really taking a backseat in this current meta, and that's the Stamina Templar. The 
The Stamplar absolutely rocks both in terms of simplicity and damage, and I rate it C plus tier. Charge in and melt single target or groups without some complex rotation. The downside, you're not nearly as survivable as the other classes, including the Godplar. Er I mean the Magpar. With Living Dark getting the removal of weapon damage scaling, you're back to dodge rolling constantly and praying to Talos you have the resources to sustain. Talos the Mighty! Talos the Unerring! I've tried to make the Stamplar work, and I can, with about 40,000 HP or with Living Dark scaling with weapon damage. Now, currently in this meta, I'm stacking two, three, four heals for survivability, which destroys my sustain. Moreover, once you launch into attack, you're vulnerable because unlike the Magpar, your offensive abilities do not heal you. So you're on a Stamplar and you start shifting to more and more magic abilities for survivability. You even put a back bar resto instead of maybe a two-hander or sword and shield. And then you start asking yourself, the question. If I'm shifting to magic abilities, why am I playing Stamina Templar? There isn't an answer. Keeping it 100 with you, pick a Magpar. It's way better. I'd say play this class if you want super high DPS that's easy to pull off. Just know you'll need very high situational awareness, defensive gear sets, and resource sustain to pull it off. Or you could play a Dragonite with near infinite resource sustain, invincibility, ultimate like corrosive armor, super high damage, and out of this world ultimate gen. We'll save that one for later, much later. Next up might be a little bit controversial and I'm going to stick with it. That's the Stamina Warden. I consider the Stamdom a glass cannon class and rank it B-. Rambo in with two offensive sets and hope to god you blow up the entire team. And when you do, you'll be having the time of your life. Well, until you realize you have the exact same problem that the Magnon does. You need super high HP with Arctic Blast to survive shrinking your stamina pool to itsy bitsy teensy weensy 20,000. Or you can lower your HP and start running three or four healing abilities which are primarily magic and a back bar restoration staff and then you'll get into the problem of asking yourself why am I playing standum when the majority of my abilities are magic? It's much easier for a Magnum to use spin to win than it is for a Stamdom to use seven abilities that cost magic. The resource sustain is no day at the beach, requiring you to run either Smoke Bear Haunt or Jewels of Misru or a Wretched Vitality 5-piece gear set on the back bar. I rate it above the other classes because its kill potential is so high. And while the healing is terrible unless I have high HP, the mobility carries your survivability. You can also run in a small group with a pocket healer and essentially rid yourself of pretty much all the negatives and become a stamina bomber. The too long didn't read here on the stamina is pick this up if you want to make big, huge AoE nuke play. But just realize you're going to struggle with healing and resource sustain unless you're very, very careful with your loadout. Up next is the unique playstyle, and that's the Stam Blade, a ganker and something that really excels in solo play. The Stam Blade I rank B tier and is ideal for someone who's antisocial, has no friends, and is a lone wolf. I'm just kidding. Or am I? This class excels at single target kills and is shockingly great with gear purchased from traders. In fact, on PCEU server with 100,000 gold, I was able to make a great ganker nightblade without monsters, mythics, or trials gear. And the obvious statement here is you can stealth or cloak away, though it's not as reliable as it has been in the past. And there's some hard counters to this skill now. The downsides are you have very little to offer a group beyond single target pressure. I often find myself picking off backline healers in Battlegrounds or poor siegers in Cyrodiil. Whereas my lizard brain says, charge in! This is the chopper! And that's just it. Stamblade requires a high skill cap. Sure, there are Nightblades out there that make it look easy, but trust me, it's not. Especially since Stamblade benefits greatly from running Stage 3 Vampire due to the strikes from the Shadows passive, boosting your weapon damage. Trust me, you do not want to encounter a Magic Dragonite as a Stage 3 Vampire. I rank the Nightblade ahead of other classes because you can do incredible feats solo and one-shot someone from stealth. Pick up a Stamblade if you want to be independent in PvP, or you have some sick and twisted sense of humor ganking a poor level 13 in Imperial City. You know who you are. Moving on, and that's the Stamina Necro. The 
The Stam Crow is exceptional at survivability with little effort, and I rank it B+. Primarily due to your passives in Spirit Mender, which has two super strong morphs, you're very survivable with very little effort. You can generate a ton of ultimate, all of which your class-based ultimates rock. Your resource sustain is slightly better than a warden, and your AoE burst potential is second to none. So what's the downside of the Stam Crow? It's terribly predictable. Okay, here we go with another Rush Crow crutching on Rush of Agony set in a VMA two-handed spamming one ability stampede. <sighs> Or you get the Balor Dizzy Swing Clever Alchemist build that does nothing but tries to bait you out of resource and wait for a 500 DB to nuke you in one shot. Sure, it's effective, but it's miserable to play in my opinion. The other issue is you lack any sense of mobility and lumber around like a sloth in comparison to the other stamina builds. But your survivability makes up for it in multiple strong heal over time and high burst healing due to the hybridization changes. You'll want to play a Stam Crow if you're a very patient player waiting for your time to strike, or you you want something very tanky with very little effort. I often play my Stam Crow and sit there constantly buffing over and over and over with very little attacking and I get frustrated and log into a different character almost immediately. But now we're about to spice it up and moving to the first A tier class on our list and that's my favorite Stam build and that's the Stamina Dragonite. The Stamina Dragonite I rate A-, and it has a trifecta of power in the Elder Scrolls Online. Corrosive Armor, God Mode Ultimate that makes you nearly unkillable and ignoring armor when using direct damage attacks. Combustion Passive, Resource Sustained through Dot Pressure and the Charge Weapon Traits. Battle Roar Passive, Resource Sustained through Ultimate Usage. Both Magic and Stamina Dragonites are incredible in almost any context in PvP in the Elder Scrolls Online. Solo, Group, Open World, Keep Fights, Farming Teleport, or an Imperial City, you name it. You can use multiple different weapon setups and make it work. Your resource sustain is tied through ultimate usage, making a very unique playstyle, allowing for ultimate generation sets like Daedric Trickery and leaning into dot-heavy pressure proc sets like Plague Break for huge damage. Well then, Deltia, why isn't this damn DK number one? The DK just doesn't have the escapability the Sorcerer has, nor the healing the Magpar or the Mag DK has. The more you lean into healing and survivability on this damn DK, the more magic abilities you start to use. You get to the same point as previous classes. Why am I playing a Stamina Dragonite when all my healing and survivability comes from magic and you start to hybridize and lean into magic more and more? Going, okay, well, shouldn't I just play a Magic Dragonite? Personally, I love the look, the mobility, and the feel of this damn DK and prefer it as my favorite stamina class in the game. But if I'm being objective, like Skip Bayless objective here. How Cowboys. Keep in mind, the Dragonite class will receive some adjustments and nerf coming in update 34 in June, but I still believe in my class ranking because the combination of Battle Roar and Corrosive Armor is just so strong. You'll see a reduction in Burning Embers heal, which really doesn't affect Stamina Dragonites, more so hybrids. A longer cooldown on Combustion, higher cost for coagulating blood, and a reduction in damage for Engulfing Flames, which really affects Magic Dragonites. The too long didn't read here is you'll have a little bit less resources, but you can rely on gear sets like Daedric trickery, blood spawn, and heroism potions to sustain just fine, and I still believe the Dragonite is OP. I have to admit it, it's just not as good as the next in the list. Speaking of next on the list and what I consider the best in open world 1VX, and that's the Magic Sorcerer. The Magic Sork I rank is A tier. The single target pressure and the mobility is insane. With timing, you can burst down nearly anyone. All three of your in-class ultimates are gangbusters and you have the most unique move and ability in the game, making you zoom away like a flash. You are nearly as gear dependent as other classes and I was able to make a 100,000 gold build on PCU and do great. Another benefit of the Magic Sork is it's been great day one and has remained either A or S tier throughout the entirety of the game. You can roam around open world Cyrodiil and have the ability to escape the entire Zerg due to the massive magic pool, and that alone puts it into A tier above the Stamina Dragonite and others. Well then, what's the downside, Deltia? You basically need a babysitter when you're playing the Magic Sork, and that's due to your 6 second duration of your shields. Sorcerers require higher magic pools and shields for protection rather than pure burst healing, though you could argue the Matriarch pet does pretty well. With only a 6 second duration on your max strength shields, you're very vulnerable to attacks if you don't constantly 
cast this. Similar to the Stamina Nightblade, it's great solo because you can 1vx nuke down single targets and flee to fight another day. One strength it has over the Stam Blade is group utility with negate magic. Combine that with the Magro Bomber build and we are nuking huge groups in tandem. More on that later. You just wait. I put it behind the other classes because of the ease of play and lack of big time AoE damage. Moving on to Lord Fangrush's class, and that's the Stamina Sorcerer. There he is! Gad's here! Fangrush is here! Hold up! Oh boy, is this damn sorcerer powerful now, and I rank it A tier. This class has everything the Mag Sork has, but in addition, huge AoE damage. On my Bork, Bo Sork build that is, I can AoE nuke down huge groups, especially in battlegrounds. I bumblebee in, hit a couple of dark deals, top off my resources, and do it all over again. Plus, there's an enormous amount of proc sets you can abuse that make you absolutely lethal. Plague Break, Unleash Terror, Dragon's Appetite, and there's a secret set I'm not quite sharing yet. Can you guess what it is? The downside of the Stamina Sorcerer is, well, it's unforgiving if you're not paying attention literally every second. The class is best played with low HP and blurring speed. You'll need to retreat and get into the boring dark deal cycle of casting to refill your stamina. Similar to a Magic Sork, it has a very high skill cap to survive, but can do damage easily and quite well. Also, this class and playstyle takes huge advantage of the hybridization change, making Crystal Fragments being able to proc off of any stamina or magic ability. Crystal Weapon will get two procs, pairing it with a light attack and a main spamble and another light attack for a huge burst damage combo in a short window. Overload now gives stamina, curse, fury, scale with magic and or stamina and you end up with a flexible nightmare on the battlefield. What holds this class back, frankly, is complete hot garbage healing and absolutely nothing to cleanse negative effects like the Templar has with extended ritual. But put this in the right hands, it's lethal. Finishing A tier is my favorite class to play in Cyrodiil and what I end up playing daily on stream and that's the Magic Necro. The Magic Recro I rate as A tier, and it is currently the only class that can single-handedly change the course of a fight. Put a good macro in Contested Keep and it flips, or it defends, single-handedly wiping groups of 6 or 10 people. This is predominantly due to its combo of gear and skill, Avid Boneyard, which allows you to proc your own synergy, unique to the Necro, and running Harmony Jewelry traits, amplifying its damage dramatically. The Dark Convergence Gear Set, AoE sucking ability that only is rivaled by Rush of Agony. Vicious Death gear set for massive multi-kill explosions. And Colossus, one of the biggest, hardest hitting ultimates in the game. With the right timing and a good necro, you can put so much AoE damage in a short window and kill a massive amount of players, essentially making you the dominant player on the battlefield, especially Cyrodiil. I haven't had this much fun on a character since 2016 Emperor Magpar, and you feel super impactful each and every fight. Well, what's the issue with this class? You're pigeonholed pretty much into this big Zerg v Zerg bomber type setup, so you're not really going to excel that well playing solo, and you're not going to excel doing a 1v1 versus an equally skilled and competent player as you. I'll say just this. I rarely play my Magpar in PvP because the macro can instantly change the battlefield. The Magpar I rank overall stronger than the entirety of ESO. If you've never single-handedly changed a keep fight, a scroll push, a hammer battle, pick up macro and check out my build. Thank me later. Or you can give me your Twitch Prime. Jeff Bezos gave it to you for a reason. Moving on, that's my main and my favorite class of all time, and that's the Magic Templar. the Magic Templar, I still rank S tier and believe it's the second strongest class in the entirety of ESL PvP. The Magpar's strengths are its damage abilities also heal you, purifying light for burst damage, puncturing sweep spammable and AoE, and radiant glory for a range execute. Living Dark is going through a balance change, but even that isn't completely useless in its current form. You can stack Living Dark with extended ritual and channel focus. Now you have three strong heals over time running while you're being attacked. Combine this with your offensive damage damage in healing skills, you have a true meathead class. Also, the Magpar was one of the only classes that didn't rely on proc sets or Draugrkin for its kill potential. You have many gear sets to choose from and one of the highest possible spell damage classes due to your passive. It's also what I consider the most beginner friendly build in ESO PvP, and what I constantly tell people to pick up when they're just starting to learn PvP. 
stack a ton of HP, put on Sword and Shield, and learn how to handle pressure without feeling like you're having a panic attack. The Magpar is also the one class that can hold up to a Dragonite 1v1 due to extended ritual cleanse, but it doesn't reach the number one spot. The Magpar is too dependent being stationary for its house rip Eric Robel. I also don't think the Magpar's sustain is nearly as good as the Dragonite's nor its ultimates. But that's just nitpicking here. Even with Living Dark scaling change, I firmly believe it's the second best overall class in PvP and what I constantly recommend for beginners. Well, it's pretty obvious what I consider number one, so let's talk about the Apex Predator in ESO PvP in 2022, and that's the Mag DK. Mag DK, S plus tier, what can I say? It's literally God mode. Battle Roar giving you back resources and health for using the ultimate. Combustion Passive giving you back Magicka and Stamina for applying dots and proccing status effects. And the almighty Corrosive Armor. Capping your damage, ignoring armor on direct damage attacks, and doing AoE damage for 12 seconds. The Earthen Heart Tree's passives alone are the strongest in the game, and paired with the super hard hitting dot pressure, and you'll end up with a meta meathead maker like the Mag DK. Now, Mag DK has even more healing with Coagulating Bud and Burning Embers combo. Burning Embers healing you every single second that it's doing damage rather than the end of its effect. Combined with a back bar restoration staff, and you have, well, you guessed it, even more more resource sustain, major mending, and you're a walking juggernaut. Want to play Magic DK? Great! You can pick up nearly any gear set and do well due to battle or corrosive armor combo. Rallying Cry, Gator Trickery, Gator Trick Daddy, Kind Marchers, Plague Break, Burning Spell Weave, the list goes on and on. Not to mention that you can use Cinder Storm heals per second and abuse the Earth and Heart passive, getting you back stamina every time you cast it over and over and over, allowing you to have a back bar sword and shield and basically permanently blocking. Speaking of sword and shield, this class isn't locked down to a specific set of weapons. You can do well with literally any combination. I prefer dual wield on my front and resto on my back, but 2H is great. Heck, even Lightning Staff and Sword and Shield can do well, even if it's off meta. Well then, does the Magic DK have a downside? And yes, it does. It doesn't have the mobility or the escapability as the Stamina Sorcerer, Magicka Sorcerer, or Stam Nightblade. It doesn't have the ability to remove dots like the Magic Templar's Extended Ritual. But the pros outweigh the cons, and you end up with one of the best resource sustain, damage both single target and AoE classes in the entirety of the Elder Scrolls Online. Don't believe me? Play a high MMR battleground in 75% will be Magic DKs, including me. Keep in mind the Magic Dragonite will see some adjustments in Update 34 with reduction in Burning Embers heal, longer cooldown of Combustion, and higher costs for Coagulating Blood, and a reduction in damage from Engulfing Flames. The result is less God Mode resource sustain and a little bit less damage, but you still have the foundation of the house and what makes it meta. Hard hitting damage over time, searing hot whips, and the combination of Battle Roar and Corrosive Armor makes it a handful regardless of the nerfs. Dragon I still is OP in what I consider the meta maker. Well, gang, that's a video. I hope this video helped you pick the right class for PvP and when in doubt, pick a Templar and hit jabs. Come catch me live at twitch.tv slash Gaming, where I play these builds live, interact with you, the community, and also don't forget to check out my website for a starting point on PvP builds. I have and play them all. When some I don't necessarily enjoy, I do my best to keep them up to date with practical experience. Thanks for watching.